Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And what we're going to do in this video is we're going to adopt a third party camera to our Unify Protect installation. So let's hop over here real quick. What I've got is I've got a Cloud Key G2 that is on the latest release of Unify OS for the Cloud Key, which is, let's see, 4.1.9 is officially GA for uh, Cloud Keys. It's still EA for uh, some of the other consoles, but it is the, the uh, official release, as you can see here. I've uninstalled all other apps, and I just have Protect. Over here, I have an Axis M3204 camera that I had kicking around. <clears throat> you can see it's pointing um, just straight up. It's kind of catching the screen over here. I'll wave to you. And uh, it's, sitting, it's sitting on my desk. But what we want to do is we want to be able to at least record <clears throat> this camera in Protect. So the first thing we've got to do in Protect is we've got to go to our settings. And we've got to go to system and we've got to go down here to discover third party cameras and we've got to turn that on and apply the changes now it's going to look out on the network it's going to see if it can see any cameras and that was actually super fast i've seen this take five minutes before but that was super fast now you can see the axis m3204 is available for adoption but when i click adopt uh this this camera is factory defaulted besides this little text up here this overlay and then I changed the root password um, this is going to use on VIF so when I just click this adopt the first time this is probably going to fail um, with the root account it might work but we'll see because I don't think I have root set up as an on VIF uh, user so yeah you can see I get invalid credentials so we got to go over to our camera we're going to go into setup system system options we'll go into on VIF. we're going to add a user and um, we're just going to do root root and then i think we might be able to just leave that as media user this is an older firmware on this access camera we might have to come adjust that but we're going to click ok there now we're going to go back over here we've got root root let's cancel that and click adopt again Still invalid credentials, so we'll change this user. We'll make, uh, let's see here. All right, so we'll close that because I couldn't resize the window. We'll put that password in there. We'll make it an operator. See what that does. Cancel this. Click to adopt. Root root and it liked that much better so if you've got uh, <clears throat> your onvif users make sure they're at least an operator I wouldn't make them an administrative uh, user but uh, that other user that's in there the media user that didn't work so now we can see in here we've got our access m3204 and it is adopted to our Unify Protect. I'm going to click uh, play for the live stream and you're going to see this is the exact same live stream that I see when I go to the live view over here. It is essentially seeing exactly what this camera sees. So if I come back over here and I put my hand over it, you can see it's it's moving pretty much in near near real time as, as good as it can, right? So now you've got the um, third-party camera adopted in Protect. So what are our options from here? We can't make any camera changes. We can come in here, we can share the live stream, we can remove it, we can do some uh, notifications, except with the third-party cameras, we don't get like the native uh, motion detection, AI, things like that. We get recording really is what we get and what we're going to do is we can do always record never record or a custom schedule and then we can also set uh, that custom retention or um, auto retention 
So I'm just going to leave it on always and auto. And if we uh, want to make any camera changes, then we have to come over to the actual camera, go into the setup, make any of those setting changes that we want. Now, what I will tell you, and if we, real quick, let's go back over to the dashboard. So now if I have multiple cameras, you know, you would see, and it, look, if I move my mouse up there, you can see it on the screen uh, moving. We can go back to our, our playback, and you can see that we have the start of recording. We have live here, and you can see right here it is recording. Um, you're not going to get detections and things like that because it is a third-party camera. However, and, and let's back up before we get to the however, uh, the, when we look at the Unify cameras, they're doing that processing in the, in the camera. And the Unify Protect software knows how to talk to the camera and do that. With this, it's, it's just grabbing that stream um, via OnVIF and bringing it back to your, your Protect system where we can record it. Now, what's coming, I'm going to pause this, I'm going to bring this up because I'm going to show you what's coming. So if you head on over to store.ui.com, go to camera security, and scroll down, you're going to see this little device down here called the AI port. And it's going to be available December 18th. It's $199. And what this is actually going to do is it's going to take either your OnVIF third-party cameras like this Axis, or it's going to take the older Unify cameras. And what it's going to do is it's going to uh, give you the detection classification and recognition recognition capabilities and it's going to give you that advanced AI and you'll actually be able to power your third-party camera from this and also have this device powered from your switch so we can look at some of the the videos or uh, pictures that they've got you can see they've got it mounted to a wall here um, and so this is basically going to take a camera that's just OnVIF compatible and it's going to make it, uh, it's going to do all the heavy lifting as far as the AI goes. Because all the AI stuff that happens in Unify actually happens at the camera level. It's not happening at the NVR level. So you can see right here when you deploy this, you're going to come out of your switch into the device and then to your camera. Whether it's third party or whether it's one of the older Unify cameras in the box there's not a lot of thrills there now I have asked uh, ubiquity since I, I use a lot of third-party cameras um, and I use a lot of access cameras I also use a lot of access license plate recognition cameras I have asked them if uh, they might entertain sending me one of these devices so that we can take a look at it I don't know if they're gonna send it or not um, but this is gonna make if you've got some of those higher-end cameras that you want to use with protect you know you've got a new access camera obviously this one was end of life I think in uh, 2020 so if I've got it the lens fixed and I've got it set where I want it I may not want to mess with this I may just want to let it record and I might want to let it record on a schedule but if I've got a newer camera and I want to start moving over to protect I'm definitely going to want to look at something like this protect AI port so I think this is a really good option if you're moving towards Protect. And this is the thing, is that Ubiquity has taken, you know, Protect and they have done so much work to it that uh, we are looking at moving off of Synology Surveillance Station because there's really not much that Unify can't do, especially now with the API, the webhooks, and things like that. The, there's not much that Synology is going to be able to offer you uh, that protect can't offer you so and especially now that you can adopt all of those third-party cameras in and yes you do have to buy the you know the ubiquity nvr whether it's the enterprise the pro the video recorder or the the cloud key plus um, you do have to you know have their nvr but now you can use all the other cameras. You can do the AI stuff with the cameras. 
having this other device is really um is really a, a game changer um i don't know if they put that in is that under the add-ins down here i lost it wherever it was at uh here it is the ai port this is really a game changer because now it takes this third-party camera we've got and it adds all of that functionality to it so i'm really excited i'm hoping i get one of those if i don't um Sometimes people send me stuff to try out, do videos on, things like that. But yes, so yes, you can adopt third-party cameras. It's just as easy as what I showed you, um, but you don't get any frills, right? Everything has got to be done through the camera for now until this AI port becomes available. So if you've got any questions about this, let me know down in the comments. I will um, answer any questions that I can. Uh, we're supposed to be getting some snow, so I might take this Axis camera, um, and I'll actually show this to you real quick. So I actually had a nice bullet cam, and I have set it somewhere, and for the life of me, I can't find it. So I ran out uh, to where I have some extra cameras, and I actually don't even have the dome on this, right? It's just the guts of the camera, um, and I, I plugged it in. I factory defaulted it, upgraded it to the latest firmware that was available and you saw us do everything else from start to finish. So if you got any questions about this, let me know down in the comments. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, comment, and share. Follow me on Twitter and TikTok. Those links are down below, along with affiliate links, a Patreon link. And if you need IT consulting, uh, whether it is for camera configuration, voice over IP, network configuration, storage, all those things, Head on over to willyhow.com, fill out that contact form, and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. If you want to talk about this and other topics, head on over to community.willyhow.com and sign up and start the thread now. Once again, I'm Willie. Yes, you can adopt third-party OnVIF compatible cameras to protect. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.